I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network, and here with me today is Simon Moores, Managing Director of Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, it's great to be here. So the first CAFES conference has just ended. Did the event meet your expectations and we will be hosting this event every year? So yes, the event definitely met our expectations. It would have exceeded it in many ways, um, certainly with two reasons. Right? The talks were excellent, informative, and from both the commercial leaders in the uh, lithium iron supply chain and the, um, and the semi-technical side as well. The attendees were key. So the attendees we had decision makers from across, from lithium producers to battery makers to even battery pack manufacturers. Um, and the cathode guys were here as well. And they were all mixing for the first time ever. And so the quality of the delegates, the quality of the agenda and the networking opportunities meant that it was a superb event. We'll definitely be doing it next year. And we're working on a on how to make it bigger and better but whilst maintaining and keeping the quality, because that's, that's key for the future of the industry. And this, this is now the premier platform for the lithium-ion battery industry. All right. And you recently testified at a U.S. Senate hearing on lithium-ion batteries and mentioned that the battery metals industry is currently in the middle between a niche market and mainstream. What needs to happen for the industry to make that jump? Yeah, the Senate thing was quite interesting. Uh, speaking to the well, I guess the highest politicians in the U.S. Um, was, was something special, and, and we could get the, direct, the message direct to them, which was that those that control the lithium-ion battery industry will heavily influence the next generation of the auto sector and the energy space. And so to control the battery industry, you need to have the supply chains in place for lithium, for graphite, cobalt, and nickel to make these batteries. The key thing is, you know, these aren't commodities, these are, these are speciality functional raw materials. These are tailor-made for each customer. So the challenge for the U.S. is to secure these supply chains as much as they can. The challenge for the industry is to turn a speciality niche into a mainstream product, whilst uh, it's to scale up, essentially it's scaling up um, speciality uh, products on a commodity level. Lithium going from 75,000 tons of battery grey material to uh, in excess of 600,000 tons in a seven year period. You know, this is a big shift, uh, and I think the industry needs investment. The industry needs big money to come into the space. It needs for the big players to understand um, big players outside of the lithium ion supply chain, like Rio Tinto, like BHP Billiton, um, to understand the opportunities here. It also needs the car companies. VW, BMW, Toyota. It needs these companies to understand that they have to secure the whole supply chain from the mine to the battery if they're going to realize these very bullish targets. Right. And uh, one of the topics that continues to come up in the lithium market, as you just mentioned, is the lack of investment. Can you let us know where we are in terms of what the market needs for EV production? Yeah, so lithium needs to scale up significantly and it needs a lot of money to do that. So at present, just over a billion dollars has been raised in this recent price spike, the last two, two and a half years. Lithium needs to raise another seven to nine billion dollars to get to where we need to be by about 2025, 2026. So there's a lot of money need that needs to be placed and that's what the market has to work out at the moment. Right. And processing of raw materials seems to be key for the electric car demand that we know is forecast to significantly increase in the next few years. We know that this industry is dominated by China. Will other countries be able to catch up soon enough? So on the, the, the processing is critical for these battery raw materials. You know, it's not a commodity, it's a speciality niche. And so you're correct that China dominates the majority of this step in the supply chain. The battery industry is a Asia-Pacific industry. It's a China, Korea, Japan dominated one. And so other companies need to scale up that critical processing step. They need the battery grade processing plants, the capacity in place, because it doesn't matter how much lithium, how much graphite, cobalt or nickel you have in the ground. It's is it the right uh, material? Can you process that into a high quality, consistent, pure battery grade product? Um, and that's the challenge that that's the biggest challenge for me that these in, these companies will have to make. We talk a lot about electric cars, but what about light duty electric vehicles and buses? Um, will demand from that space also grow significantly? 
Yeah, good question. At Cathodes 2017 today, uh, we had Alta Motors speaking, actually. And this is a company in California, a pretty new company that makes electric motorbikes. And they gave a great presentation outlining how this light-duty vehicle... So these are vehicles that are like motorbikes and, and uh, vehicles that have battery packs anywhere from one to maybe nine kilowatt hours. So probably a fifth of the size of, say, a Tesla Model uh, 3 how that's a huge market, huge potential market. Uh, they were saying they expected the market to be a 40 gigawatt hour market by the mid 2025s. I mean, it's, it's overlooked and, and the one thing it shows is it's not just about electric vehicles anymore, it's not just about energy storage, it's everything's becoming battery powered. And with lithium ion batteries becoming low cost, becoming abundant, um, all of these new markets that no one's ever put in their forecasts are actually happening. And where are we on the mega factory front right now? How many are in the works at this point? Is there a firm idea of how much lithium, graphite and cobalt they will need? Yeah, so today I presented the latest lithium ion battery mega factory chart from Benchmark and we're at 20 now. You know, 2014, when I first presented this chart, we had three plants in the pipeline. The main one was the Tesla Gigafactory that kicked this all off. And since the Tesla Gigafactory, there's been a global battery arms race and that has gone into overdrive in 2017 we have three new plants that have taken up to 20 and they're starting to be in europe so we have north vault in sweden that want to do a tesla a gigafactory tesla gigafactory sized uh, battery plant in sweden we also have one in the pipeline in germany which people have always suspected will happen it's not yet been 100 percent confirmed but we believe that germany will be pursuing its own lithium-ion battery production very soon and do we know yet whether these mega factories will be using the same battery chemistry? Will variations be significant? Yes, so the most of them are rounding on the NCM chemistry, which is nickel, cobalt, manganese. The question is what, for what amount of nickel, what amount of cobalt, what amount of manganese is going to be in this battery, what ratios? That's where the most innovations on the cathode side are happening at the moment. But we do know it's going to be a mix of nickel, we expect the nickel in the battery to significantly go up. We expect the cobalt to come down slightly and the manganese to say pretty stable. Uh, also, you have the NCA, the, nithium, uh, the nickel cobalt aluminium, which is the Tesla Panasonic chemistry. That's still pretty much exclusive to Tesla. So really, we see the vast majority of these lithium ion battery mega factories using the NCM cathode. And uh, car makers are now looking to supply raw materials directly from upstream companies. What are some of the challenges they could face? And do you expect this to become more common in the next decade? It will become more common. I don't expect car companies to start owning mines around the world, but I do expect them to start doing serious contracts with uh, serious producers of battery grade raw materials. The key thing is that when a big car company announces they're going to produce 10 million pure EVs over the next 10 years and they're serious about it, they have to do it, then securing the battery supply is relatively easy because building a battery plant is it's not the critical, uh, the critical step. It, the key thing is securing that raw material supply. And that's the hardest thing that most companies overlook because it's so, mining is so far removed from the auto sector that there's a feeling that the market will just sort itself out. And that isn't going to be the case. So we expect these big car companies to start doing serious take-or-pay, off-take contracts with raw material producers. Um, and that will be the defining factor for the next four years. Right. And my last question for you today, in terms of prices, what is your current price forecast for lithium? We believe lithium will continue to rise. We said a few years ago that the, the present lithium price run will continue and it has is that actually it's gone into a second phase really now and so we don't see any price crash on lithium on the horizon and we're talking about the next 18 months to two and a two and a half years because the demand is too great people are planning long-term battery producers are now looking a three to five year horizon they're looking to sign long-term contracts with existing producers this is just adding layers and layers of additional demand and long-term demand to lithium Quite simply, there's not enough supply to meet the demand, and the demand is increasing quicker than the supply is, much, much quicker. Therefore, lithium's price will remain strong for some time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having us.